friends, I recently bought my first CD transport and I spent a whopping $1,299 on the brand new ERD. Is it worth that price? How much have I enjoyed it? How does it sound compared to my other more standard CD players? Let me tell you about my entire experience with the ERD next. Now, the ERD is the brand new CD transport and USB hub available from Shit Audio. And as soon as it was announced, I pulled the trigger. Now, I did have a bit of sticker shock because after taxes and fees, this came in at over $1,400. And I buy most of the gear myself for this channel, which means I got to look around and find some stuff to sell to pay this sucker off. But what you may be asking is, why would I even want a CD transport? And that's because I basically grew up with CD players. I've owned tons of CD players over the years, and I have a couple here right now. But I've always been curious if a CD transport would sound differently than my traditional CD players. And when I saw that shit announced the ERD and that it also had the ability to sort of act as a digital USB hub, I decided to pull the trigger and see if I could finally test all this gear out and determine if I would prefer a transport only or a CD player. Now, to that point, you may be curious what exactly the difference is between a transport only and a regular CD player. A CD transport's main job is basically acting as a disc spinner. It's going to open up a tray, put your disc in, it'll spin it, it will read the information, the ones and the zeros, and it will send it digitally to an external DAC where it will, where it will then be converted to the analog signal that we can actually hear with our ears. Now that differs from a regular CD player, which would have a built-in DAC. And that's why you would see an RCA connection on a traditional CD player, because you can connect it directly to your preamplifier or amplifier and hear music. But there is no RCA input on the back of a transport because there's no built-in DAC. So you have to pair it with either a, an external DAC, a preamp with a built-in DAC, or an amplifier with a DAC, basically, you just got to have a DAC to run this thing. And I have really fallen in love with the idea of owning different DACs over the last year. So I thought having a CD transport would be fun as I continue on that journey and upgrade my DACs over time. It'd be great just to have a dedicated transport to be able to get the best performance possible out of those DACs. Now, as soon as the ERD arrived, I just immediately pulled it from the box and started setting it up. I didn't bother spending much time in the manual because I thought, it's a CD transport. I'm just going to plug it up and to my external DAC and start running with it. But I did have a couple hiccups in setting it up, and it would have made more sense had I read the manual. First thing, there is no eject button to open the tray. That really confused me because every CD player I've ever owned has had an eject button. On the ERD, you press the stop button and you hold it and it will open the tray. If you simply press the stop button once, it will stop the music playback. This really threw me for a loop for a couple days because I was just too stubborn to read the manual. <laughs> once I did and figured it out, that tray's been opening and closing great and everything has been working perfectly. Now, the other thing that really threw me for a loop was that you can use the uh, ERD as basically like a digital USB hub thanks to two USB inputs on the rear of the unit. And I'll be honest with you, I have spent a lot of time the last 10 years or so in the analog world. And so as I'm sort of uh, walking back into the digital world with CD players, transports, external DACs, and all of this stuff, USB connections are not the most... Uh, then it's not the easiest thing for me to understand at times. Basically, I had a hard time figuring out which cord to hook up to this, to these units. Now, I own a Modi 3 Plus DAC, and it was taking me a minute to figure out how to connect that to the ERD. I didn't seem to have the right cables. Now, I did reference the manual on this, and it said you need a C to C, USB C to C cable or USB C to A. But as it turns out, that was correct for using my MacBook and connecting it. I needed a C to C. But for the Modi 3 Plus, I actually needed a micro USB for the Modi 3 Plus that would connect to the rear of the ERD, which was USB C. And I'm embarrassed to admit that I bought the wrong cables a couple of times trying to get this set up. But again, I'm just sort of wading into these waters. So everything is uh, sort of a learning process. But once I got everything hooked up and connected, everything was awesome to use. It's really cool to be able to hook up those 
different units, run it through the ERD and then through my DAC, which basically only allows me to hook up one or two digital connections. This frees up several more connections by using the ERD instead of the DAC. Now, speaking of the two USB inputs, when you're looking at the rear of the unit, you'll also notice that there's an option for three outputs, an AES output, SPDIF output, and a USB output, which uses SHIT's own branded Unison USB option. Now, the ERD also comes with the traditional SHIT remote control, so it means it looks a lot like my Saga Plus preamp remote control, and maybe I've mixed them up a couple times, but that's okay. Uh, the, the SHIT remotes always feel great in your hand. I generally like them, and this one works great, and I haven't had any issues with it. And it's pretty handy when you're sitting across the room and you need to either skip tracks, stop, or change outputs, inputs, anything of that nature. And now that I have the ERD up and running, I thought it'd be fun to do a sound comparison with two other units in my house that I use for CD playback. Now, one is a traditional CD player. It's the Cambridge AXC35. Retails probably between four or five hundred dollars. And the other is just a mass market Sony Blu-ray player that I sometimes use for CD playback. Uh, I just bought it at Best Buy. I think it was like 300 bucks. You could probably get it for a little bit less than that when it's on sale, especially around the holidays these days. Those are the two units I have on hand. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I buy my own gear for these videos. And so after buying the ERD, I didn't have the funds available to buy another transport only something maybe like uh, an audio lab, um, a less expensive model or something along those lines. The funds just weren't there. So this is what I am going to use when I'm comparing the sound. Now for this sound comparison, I had all, I used all three units connected to the Shit Modi 3 Plus DAC, which was connected to their Saga Plus preamp which was also connected to their Yolohorn amplifier. A fun little 10 watt amp that I've really enjoyed using in my small listening space, connected with my vintage Clips Heresy speakers that has just sounded great. Now with each CD, I would start with the Cambridge, and then I would listen to the Sony Blu-ray player, and then I would listen to the Erd. Then I would go back and listen to everything all over again. That's right, my family really enjoyed that entire process. But I'm just gonna sum up what I was able to hear throughout the entire process. And it really stood out with one CD in particular, but with every CD I listened to, this was the same case, but I'll just use this one as an example. And that is the live recording of Portishead at Roseland in New York City. Now this CD is a live recording, so it's got a lot of big air room reverb in it. The drums sound really big and the vocals are very forward and in your face. And at times when I was listening to that CD with the Cambridge, it would come across, especially during the vocals, when the vocalist is holding a really powerful note for a very long time, it would kind of make me wince a little bit. It just sounded digital and shiny. I don't know that harsh is necessarily the right word. It's kind of almost too harsh, but it would all, it was very tiresome, to be honest with you. What it made me want to do was get up and turn it down. It was just too loud, it just hurt my ears. And the Sony Blu-ray player brought that back just a little bit, it wasn't quite as forward as the Cambridge. I reviewed the Cambridge here a couple times on this channel, and each time I've mentioned that the sound is a little bit forward, whether using the internal DAC or an external DAC. So what was interesting with the ERD transport what I noticed the most is that during those moments when of the other two players felt too forward or too digital, too shiny, that it was able to get the sound up close to that same spot, but then sort of bring it back just enough so that it never made me wince and it never made me want to get up and turn the music down. A lot of times with those other players, after one or two CDs, I'm just feeling tired of listening to CDs and I put on a record. But with the Erd, it was able to sort of control the sound in a way that made it pleasant to listen to. And in fact, after I was done listening to a few CDs, I went back through my collection and was pulling out more CDs to listen to because it never made me tired of listening to CDs. So it feels kind of weird saying that I heard a sound difference from a transport 
using an external DAC with two other players that are also using that external DAC. Because to me, if they're all connected to the same external DAC, they should all sound the same. But I sort of felt better after watching another video on this topic from Mike on audio, who did a blind test listening to transports and was able to hear different sounds with each. Because I'll be honest with you, at first I thought, well, I've spent all this money on the ERD. I'm probably going to trick myself into a bias thinking that, of course, it's got to sound better. It cost me $1,400 and these other two players were half of that combined, right? So obviously the ERD's gonna sound better. <laughs> so watching Mike's video helped me kind of understand that there are certain sound differences. Now, I'll be honest with you, it's not necessarily night and day. It doesn't exactly just blow you away and be like, wow, uh, this transport sounds so much different than the others. I found the differences to be just subtle, oftentimes in detail. Um, I found that the instruments were a little bit better placed. Drums were centered better with the Erd. But again, it really came down to the fact that it was able to kind of make the digital sound not be harsh and not be tiring for me. That's what excited me more when I compared it to these other two units. It keeps me wanting to make sure I still keep the Erd in my system going forward. Now, it's worth noting that when you're using the Erd for CD playback, it plays only red book CDs. It does not play SA CDs if you have a large amount of those in your collection and you're thinking about adding the ERD. So now that I've been really happy with the CD playback in the ERD, I do think it's worth pointing out the digital USB hub function and features of the ERD because that really does add to the value proposition versus other transports out on the market. What I mean by that is basically, thanks to these two USB connections, you can add other devices to the ERD for playback, whether that be a laptop or a wireless streamer, something along those lines. Now, that can be output via USB to a DAC that has a USB input. But if your DAC doesn't have a USB input, okay, you can take your devices, connect it with the USB input to the ERD, and it will convert it to SPDIF output which you can then connect to your DAC, which most likely has a SPDIF input. My head's spinning a little bit, but if you want more information on that, check out their product information on their website because it answers all these questions in a much better way than I can. But that is a great feature for someone that may not have a DAC with a USB um, input. Now, the, your DAC does have to be UAC2 compliant, yeah, I got that right. Sorry, I had to look at my notes. <laughs> in order for these to work together, um, but I have the Modi 3 Plus, and so it was a very easy sync up to the ERD with that micro USB cable to the ERD, and it uses the Unison USB technology that uh, is shit's own proprietary technology, and everything has synced up great and sounded awesome using that. So what this is actually kind of encouraging me to do is really start looking around for upgrading my DAX. Maybe go from the Modi 3 Plus to the Bifrost 2, something along those lines, or making a step outside of the shit family and maybe a Denifrips Aries 2, something along those lines. So I think that that's the other thing that this transport adds more than just being a transport is it adds this USB functionality that can kind of let you further dig into the rabbit hole of DAX that will allow, uh, allow me to basically spend more money and see if I can continue to further improve the sound by upgrading DAX over time. Well, there you have it. That's been my experience with the ERD. I'm curious what you think. Would you spend this kind of money on a CD transport that has sort of this digital hub attached to it? Or would you spend a little bit less and maybe stay in that six and $700 range, get something from Audio Lab or Cambridge, something along those lines, and just do that with a transport? Or are you fine just having your CD player? Because I think that's also a great option. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, this isn't the only piece of shit gear that I've reviewed this year. I really fell in love with their 10 watt Yola Horn amp that they released earlier this year and made a video review of that product. If you'd like to learn more about that amplifier, you can do so by watching this video here.